Hello, good morning, or whatever time you're watching this. I'm Rick, uh, this is Lionel Solutions, and lately we have been watching YouTube videos that CDL drivers, specifically in FedEx line hall, will upload, and really analyzing them from a perspective of the FedEx contractor, the world that we operate in, and just hopes to better understand the CDL driver, the routes that they're on, what they're looking for, how to take better care of them. That's what it comes down to. And it's selfish. Yes, we want to take care of everybody because we're really nice people, but it's very selfish. We want to retain, we want to recruit because it obviously impacts our bottom line. So I did a video about Lady K and it was a good one. I thought she had some good insight. I was scrolling through YouTube and then I noticed she had a different truck. Why is Lady K driving a brown truck? And I said, oh man, she left FedEx. So I think it's fun to go through the videos and find the exact point, if I can pinpoint what happened to make a driver leave FedEx. And right here, right? She's in FedEx. And let's see what this one has for us. So I'm gonna watch this and just see if I can pinpoint anything that's going wrong in her journey, in her trucking life to make her want to leave FedEx. Here we go. start to my work week. I am very late to work. Well, probably like a good hour and a half I'll be late. Okay. But yeah. Just chilling. Who's waiting on those loads? And Is there loads being waiting on? Texas. Just headed to Fort Worth, a hub. It. Like I was like, oh, I'm ready to go, but look, I have no fuel, so I have to get some fuel in my car. Felt terrible. See, so you know what makes me feel better? Junk food. Uh, I don't know. Oh, that sucks. Someone had asked me about truck schools and stuff, and I don't really have the answers. Go to a FedEx approved truck school. But my experience was I went to an approved school. I don't really know what that means. Mm. I know it's more expensive. And to haul like FedEx packages, I had to go to an approved school. So that's why I went that route. And um, it was like a month long. I went every day, um, except for the weekends. Um, for for most of the day. All right, let's dig into that because that's not as important for her. It's more important for us as contractors. She went to a FedEx approved school. What does that mean? Well, if you've watched my other videos, we've spoken about it in depth, but there is an Excel spreadsheet that adjusts uh, schools that go on and get taken off. Every state, it lists the schools that are approved. Uh, if you're interested, we just did a video, boom, right here. And this one talks about, it has a list, it scrolls through of all the FedEx approved schools. What does that mean? FedEx has schools that they prefer for whatever the reason is, I don't know. But if you go to a FedEx approved school, a driver can come out of that school and go directly into FedEx, drive the same runs that everyone else is. And what that means is typically when a driver graduates school, they have limited options on what they can do. Really, they can go drive team for a big company, JB Hunt, US Express, Sierra England, these large, large companies that self-insure and don't have the, the guidelines that the insurance companies place on a traditional owner operator, mom and pop, smaller company in order to drive for him. And that those rules have been one year, two years. I mean, they're extensive. And so a FedEx approved school, once a driver graduates, they can go right into the entry level driver program, the ELDP. There's a ton of very particular uh, specifics on it in the TSPA, but essentially 
they can be put with a lead driver, an approved lead driver, someone who's been clean for the last year, their logs have to be straight for the last year, and they can be approved as a lead driver. You put them together, and as long as you have a lead driver in the truck, then in about it's like seven weeks or so, that brand new driver fresh out of a FedEx approved school can become a normal driver for FedEx. It's a huge deal. So typically, if you've ever put somebody through the first advantage process, it has to be a year. They have to have a year of verifiable experience. They've done things. <laughs> They've seen the road. They've been out there. They probably have picked up some bad habits working for other companies. Yeah, it was an intense experience. You know? These FedEx approved schools allow us to take these drivers and get them behind the wheel of our trucks, train them on doubles early on in their career, run the exact same runs that gonna, they're going to be doing, and then they are going to be in a truck working for us and go solo. And what you're doing is really increasing the driver candidate pool that you have access to when you're competing in these markets against all these other trucking companies we can hire drivers fresh out of school the eldp is a huge deal and such a gigantic opportunity for contractors to run a much more successful business and it's not utilized enough for whatever the reason is it's finding that lead driver putting them together turning in the paperwork it's just not something that gets done enough and so that's what she's talking about with the FedEx approved school. Also, to not go through the entry level driver program, but you still went through a FedEx approved school, instead of waiting for a year, they can drive at six months. So it's six months verifiable experience, which is still very early in a career, someone can work for FedEx. So you find somebody who's still teaming for JB Hunt and you say, look, I know you're out on the road for weeks at a time and, and your schedule, you're not at home, you're not seeing your family. You've been out for six months. You went to a FedEx approved school. Do you want to be home every day? Do you want to see your family? Do you want that normal nine to five, although it's probably more like six to five schedule but you're gonna eat dinner with your family every night. You're going to be able to take your kids to school. Do you want that normal life? That's a benefit that gets so overlooked when we're talking about FedEx or really when we're uh, being frustrated with some of the, the nuances that come along with FedEx. That's one thing that just gets overlooked. Where are these jobs in the trucking industry? They just don't exist. The consistency that we're always talking about doesn't exist. You get nothing. So I went a little tirade there, but that's why Lady K, the FedEx approved school for contractors are such a huge deal because we can get you in fresh out of school. We don't have to wait a year. And then when I graduated, I was hired on to where I work now, which is like a private contractor, a Hall's FedEx trailers. TSP. So my boss, he paid back my school not all at once but he would give me like um nice. payments towards the school and every check so technically um i didn't have to pay for school i had to come up with the money up front it's getting paid back yeah so i don't know anything about any other ways of doing it I know, like, maybe, like, the cheaper options might be a little sketchy. I, I don't know. That's my input on truck school. It was easy. I made sure I knew how to drive the manual, so I tested in the manual. And it took me two tries. I failed the first time. The second time, I got my license. And I have all my endorsements. Have you heard that? She got it in a manual, so she doesn't have an automatic restriction. So for someone who got their CDL a year ago, someone her age, it would be very normal to get an automatic restriction because it's like, what's the point in 2024? I mean, every truck that they're making, especially in, in our FedEx system that has to have F cam, so they need to be newer trucks, they are automatic. And so the day of the manual trucks is, is coming to an end. But the fact that she took it twice to get it, I like that just for 
the fact that you had a driver that wanted to get it, that wanted that skill set, even if it's not relative in my company, because I have no manuals and I won't just because if something, you know, you need to get that truck, that driver leaves, you got to get it to another driver. The vast majority of drivers that are coming out of school, they can't drive manuals. They have a restriction on their license. I had to get like, I didn't have to get all of them, but I needed the triples and doubles for this job. So... I'm ready for bed. Every FedEx driver, you have to have your triples and doubles endorsements on your license. It's just a written test. It's very normal when you're recruiting drivers for the FedEx system who aren't driving in FedEx for them not to have doubles. So it's, hey, you know, got this great job for you. Do you want to be home every day? You're going to need to go to the DMV, take a test. It's 20, 25 questions, the study guides, the answers. They can find it all on the internet and you'll have to get your doubles before you you get started i'd still process them in first advantage run them through because that's not something that's really needed until the end but you want to set that expectation hey you're gonna have to get your doubles endorsements uh, in order to drive doubles within fedex and driving doubles those two trailers that are connect together with a dolly that's you not unique to just fedex but it's something that's not prevalent in the trucking industry sleep last night but I'll get good sleep tonight hopefully and I'll film some more later it is really hot out here in Texas but I'm really proud of myself because I backed into this spot with like no help and I don't really do that often with doubles and it was funny because I was taking like a little I was being a little bit slow about it talking to my co-driver and he's like man get out and guide her and he's like no man i'm trying to show her how to do it on herself and he's like no get out and, guide her. and he's like man f you and i was like it's funny they were getting into it just a little bit but i did it i had to like, get out and look probably like six times though uh, oh so she's driving a 53 at least it's like really straight in here it's not too close or anything so i just it's i think for someone who's not a driver watching this she backed up into the spot like that's a big deal that's hard <laughs> backing up trailer i've never done it before i have trouble backing up like a jet ski when we were goofing around in high school backing it up to the dock so that's not within my wheelhouse that's for sure but the idea of backing up double trailers that's inconceivable to me. Now the FedEx system, you get that a lot from drivers, like doubles, how do I do that? What's, and the first thing I say is, look, you're never driving up, you're never backing up doubles. If you have to back up doubles in like the FedEx system, you've done something wrong and you have a partner that's gonna jump out and help you if you're running team, but the FedEx system is designed for trucks to always go forward. You're never going backwards with those doubles attached because I've seen it done before and people will do it very well. That's a video I'm gonna to try to find, reversing with doubles. But I couldn't imagine that being something a, a driver would be successful at, especially into like small parking spots that loves gas stations. They're gonna send us to Portland from here we had the option just to drop it off like by our by by home we're like eh, let's get some more mileage gave the drivers the opportunity to earn more miles how do we incentivize them to do that and we have a 53 footer to go to portland with so yeah and i'm almost done actually with work um it's 8 30 our time i was gonna film myself hitting the windows but as you can see they're getting hit for me <laughs> that there be my truck i see this stuff and i'm like here. damn it'd be cool to hit the open road yep. just just get out of get out of the city and see the beautiful countryside and I forget about all the nonsense that you guys have to deal with, and I would be miserable at it because I'm extremely you want us to get an empty trailer, but it looks like the only empty trailer has like a lock on the glad hand. No 
nobody's here, so. No. So, update. We're just gonna bobtail home. So we're just gonna bobtail home. Bobtail means you're driving without the trailer. And in FedEx, you can do that and still get paid as a contractor. If it's, if they tell you, oh, we don't have any trailers, but we wanna get you home, go ahead and bobtail back. Sometimes drivers will do it because they don't want to wait and that's a huge problem depending how many miles I don't know where they're coming from But they clearly left Texas on their way to Portland with a 53 So I imagine they took that somewhere and then they just didn't have anything for them So they just said hey bobtail back or the contractor did but bobtailing is when you drive without the trailer it's just the truck and it's not a problem as long as you're under dispatch or it's not a lot of miles and you want to get your team home quicker. Great video, but it didn't tell us why why she left the FedEx network. Why? 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 Um, so maybe I'll reach out and just see if something she wants to talk about. Love to know kind of why people left. Was it for opportunity? Did something happen? And was there anything that could have been done to prevent that to keep her and maybe her teammate within the FedEx system? What was reason. the reason? I had a reason. What was the reason? What was the reason? reason? But another great one. Thank you, Lady K. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.